Hi, everybody. Mark Brown here again. Welcome back to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 Beginning and Intermediate Course. We talked in the last couple of lessons about quick and guided edit, how to take your images out of Organizer, open them, open them up into Elements Editor, and do some really instantaneous, if you will, quick or guided edits. Some of them even just one button clicks and it's done. Simple ways to take your images and improve them. If you're just looking to do only that, quick and guided, and a couple of little touches from the expert mode may be all that you need. But on the other hand, if you want to do professional level stuff, we can take it further. So this program goes both ways. There's a third piece of software inside, kind of in between uh, the organizer and Photoshop that we need to discuss because it provides you another additional method to improve your images very easily. It's called Camera Raw. And in this lesson, we're going to ask three basic questions and explain them. What is a RAW file and what is a JPEG file? How are they different? Which one is better? What is Camera Raw? And why and when should I use Camera Raw? So let's get started. We're going to revisit what is a RAW file and what is a JPEG and which one is better. Most digital cameras have two different file formats available. RAW and JPEG, or both. You can actually, I think if you remember for the in intro, you can shoot both at the same time. My camera, this little Nikon, has both. And for this lesson, by the way, you will see what happens when you shoot both of them, because I used a sample where we shot the identical shot. It doesn't shoot them two separate shots. When you click the shutter, it takes both the RAW and the JPEG at the same instant. So you see both different ways at the same time. With a JPEG image, your camera automatically applies corrections to your image. It applies auto color correction, auto exposure correction, some sharpening, some contrast, and also some lens correction. So when you first open up the JPEG image, it already looks pretty good. It's been corrected a great deal. Now, if you're shooting as an amateur and you only want to do some limited corrections to your image, make them look better, and move them onto the web or to take prints, JPEGs are fine. And there's nothing wrong with a JPEG, even for the more professional level, with a couple of exceptions. JPEG images have a narrow, a narrower range of exposure than a RAW file, so there's less recoverable detail in the shadows and highlights. This is rather important if you're shooting professional quality imagery and you want to make sure that you don't have blown out highlights or blocked up shadows, that's where the RAW file comes in right there. JPEGs have a little narrower range. So even though it has corrections applied, you may lose detail in the highs and the lows. Secondly, JPEG is a lossy compression format, which means it throws away some data when compressing the image. And the reason for that, why I can, that's why I can compress it into a small space. It has to get rid of some pixels. And when you open the image back up, the computer tries to restore all of the areas where it threw things away. And sometimes it just plain misses because a lot of the spots it has to interpolate from the areas around because it threw away a pixel and it doesn't know what to put there. And so what that will do is slightly degrade your image, and you'll end up with what's called JPEG color noise, which can be removed somewhat in uh, noise reduction, but it does degrade your image. 